Hello music students, today we are talking about flats, sharps, and naturals. Something I, I like to refer to as the dark arts, or if you will, the dark theory arts. And in that spirit, let's learn to defend ourselves against these devilishly tricky little blighters. Pixies can be devilishly tricky little blighters. Let's see what you make of them. No! <laughs> let's start with the basics, and while this may be a review for some of you, I guarantee you nobody's trying to teach you about flats, sharps, and naturals using this guy, or specifically what he's holding in his hand, the star. Let's start with the simple note, G. When we first learn about notes, we generally learn about a normal singular note like this G. But what we are now dealing with is that there are actually three Gs. There's G, of course. But there's also G flat. And G sharp. To help explain this, I'm going to use colors as an analogy. Here is the color blue. We all understand and agree that this is blue, and generally speaking, calling something blue works in most daily situations. But we also know that there are other shades of blue, like these, lighter and darker than our sample blue. Well, music is similar. Each note has a light and a dark shade, something like this. When reading music, it can be a little confusing which G you're supposed to play. We can't really write the word sharp, natural, or flat on the notes. It would look like this, and it would be hard to read and to be confusing. So, in music we have symbols, and they look like this. Of these, I find the most confusing term for music students is the middle one, natural. Instead of natural, I think it's easier just to think normal. G normal. Sometimes we don't even say G natural. We just say G, and the normal or natural is implied. Look at how the terms are stacked. Think of the natural version as the normal one in the middle. If we sharp the G, the pitch goes up. Just like sharp things are pointy, think of them pointing up. Now the flat lowers the note. Think of a tire that goes flat. It has been lowered. Let's review the symbols. What is the name of this symbol? What does this symbol do to a note? It raises it a half step. What is the name of this symbol? What does it do to a note? It lowers it a half step. Now here's where things get tricky. How to spot and identify flats and sharps in the wild. There are two ways that these hieroglyphics will appear. Method one is by placing the flat, sharp, or natural directly in front of the note. Or method two, the key signature, where the flats or sharps are pinned at the beginning of a piece of music. In this video, we're gonna focus on method number one, what I like to call in my classroom the Mario Star method. In the Mario video games, we're familiar with this little guy, the star, the power-up star. He makes you invincible for a short period of time, and he even has his own soundtrack. Flats, sharps, and naturals that are placed directly in front of a note act in a similar way. They last a short amount of time, and then they disappear. That's why I call it the Mario Star Effect. Here are two measures of quarter notes. To keep it simple and not have to talk about treble and bass clefs, I'm going to use just one line of music here, and we can pretend that all these notes are the note B. Generally speaking, all beginning instruments run into B flats and B naturals, so this will keep it simple for all of us. This time signature of 4 over 4, I think we understand that, that there are four beats in each measure, and to make more room for my doodles and my shapes and drawings, I'm going to get rid of the time signature. So here we have eight Bs, and to be more specific, eight B naturals, or B normals. Now let's apply the Mario Star Principle. I will place a single flat in front of the first note. Poof. These four notes have been transformed into B flats. But here's the weird part. These last ones have not changed. They are still B naturals. Why? Let's review what this star does in the video game. It makes you invincible for a short amount of time, and then it disappears. Same thing in music. The flat, sharp, or natural lasts only one measure, and then it disappears. It does not continue on. It's like it can't pass through this black line that divides the measures. Think of it like a wall. So riddle me this. If I want all eight Bs to be B-flats, how would I do that? Like this. I would have to add another flat to the beginning of the second measure. Now this second star affects all the notes in the second measure. And now I'm looking at eight B-flats. At this point, some of you might be wondering, this seems silly. Just write a flat on each note like this. In fact, depending on what beginning method book you're using in your classroom, you may have music written like this. It makes it a little bit easier to read in the beginning. But once you get out of the beginning stages of learning about music, you won't see this again. But a long time ago, people wrote music by hand, 
and repeatedly writing this flat symbol for every single note over and over and over and over again got really obnoxious and tiring when you had to write so much music. I mean, who likes to write repetitive things over and over besides this guy? So they decided that the flat would be good for the entire measure. That was a lot easier. Let's talk about another detail with the flats, sharps, and naturals of the Mario Star method. The flat only applies to the note that it is attached to. Here we have eight notes, but now they are moving and changing. Some are higher and some are lower. I'll label them to help avoid confusion. I don't want to use actual lines, so I don't have to talk about treble and bass clef. Notice that there are only two Bs, here and here. So when we apply the flat here, are all these notes now flat? No, because when we apply a flat to a note, it only affects that one note. It does not affect the other notes. It affects the B, but it does not affect the C, the D, the A, or any other non-Bs. So in this case, only the Bs become flat. All the other notes remain in their normal or natural states. So here's a question. How many B flats do we have in this example? Just one. Because remember, the flat cannot pass through the bar line. Here's another important detail. Where the sharp, natural, or flat appears in the measure is really, really important. Here are our eight B naturals again. Now this time I'm placing the flat in front of the third B, right here. So now, how many B flats do I have in this example? I know these two are flat, but what about these two? Are they flat? No, sharps, naturals, and flats only work going to the right, or forward, if you will, like this arrow. We know the second measure is not affected because the flat doesn't carry through the bar line. So the only flats in this line of music are these two. Let's check your understanding. How many flats are in this example? The correct answer is five. Now, let's look at one final twist. I mean, this hasn't been confusing enough, right? Here are four innocent little B naturals. Let's add a single flat at the beginning. How many B flats do we have? Four. But what if I wanted only the first one to be a B flat? What if I wanted the rest of the notes to be B naturals? How would I fix that? Like this. I would place a natural sign in front of the second B. So now this is B flat and this is B natural, but there are actually now three B naturals because the natural carries for the rest of the measure. The Mario star method works the same for sharps, naturals, or flats. But hold on, what if I only, only want just the second note to be a B natural and the rest to be B flats? What would I do? This. And finally, let's look at this, B flat B natural, B flat, B natural. In fact, if I play this, you might recognize it. It's the Jaws theme. You need sharps, naturals, and flats to make this music possible. And speaking of sharps, what about them? We spent the entire time talking about naturals and flats, but what about the sharps? Well, sharps are treated just like flats and naturals. The Mario Star works the same way, whether we're talking about flats or naturals, or sharps. At this point, I hope you have a pretty good working knowledge of how flats, sharps, and naturals work in music. This next scene is what I feel like most teachers feel like happens when they try and explain flats and sharps and naturals in their music classroom. It's certainly happened in mine. Come on now, round them up, round them up, there are any pixies! But now you have the knowledge to deal with those pesky flats, sharps, and naturals with the confidence of this flute player. And now you are ready for the second method, the blackest of all sorceries, the key signature. Basically imagine a Mario star or a Super Mario star that lasts the entire game, but now the tricky part is that you have to remember it. Instead of writing a flat sign every measure, you get just one, one only, at the beginning of the piece. This is what it would look like. See how the one flat is at the beginning of the song and then carries through? And it busts through both bar measures? This is what a real key signature would look like. Pinning a flat at the beginning of the song that lasts the entire song? Crazy. I, I hear you. Check the description below for a link to the next video, part two, where I use Minecraft, Fortnite, 
and Clash of Clans analogies to help explain key signatures, because it's a little bit more complicated. If you like these creative twists on explaining musical concepts, subscribe to this channel as I have several other projects in the work. To my fellow directors, consider checking out these devices that I created in frustration from trying to get young students with small hands to hold large brass instruments. I mean, how many times can we tell trumpets, no pinkies in the rings? And how many times have we seen trombones with death grip fists holding their instrument? If you'd like more information on these, go to the website, bandbits.org. Why is it always me?